G'day. Today we're going to uh, exploit the DAV text program, which we've done a couple of times before in other videos. But today we're going to use ROP so that we can execute arbitrary shelf code and using our ROP chain to change the protection of the stack so that it is readable, writable, and executable. It's 32-bit x86. Uh, no ASLR and no snack cookies. So let's install the program. And let's change the make file so that it is 32 bit and has. not a position independent binary just to make bugging a little bit easier and no oops no stack cookies as well compile that no pies sorry Hold it. Let's check that the program still runs. Excellent. Now this particular program has a buffer overflow in it, which I've shown before, but we'll show it again. In main, we have the environment variable being copied into home, and home is a local buffer. Okay, so let's verify that we can trigger this. And we've done this before in some of the other videos, so if you've seen the other videos you can skip ahead a few minutes. We won't spend too much time on this. Let's run the program, get a segmentation fault, excellent. Let's run the probe within GDB. And yes, we control the instruction pointer. We need to know, let's copy the DAV program into this directory. Okay. So now we're going to use a tool which we've used a number of times before. Pattern create, <coughs> which will create a cyclic pattern. We'll just show what that created. So there we go. So we we'll load. GDP and our program and we get a segmentation fault. Let's copy that. Great. So this is exactly what we started with before. Let's yeah, you know, earlier videos where we did exploitation using classic buffer overflows and return to libc. So our buffer equals a times 312. And now we want to add a rot chain to m protect the stack so that it's executable. And then we want to execute arbitrary shell code. <coughs> so we want to use mprotect. Let's first figure out what the mprotect system call number is. There we go. Okay, so intuitively, well, what we're going to do, we have our padding of 312 bytes. Okay, a 
rock chain to mprotect the stack as executable. We have a jump to ESP and then our shell code or our payload. Okay. So to change the stack to be executable, we need to issue an mprotect system call. So let's just write down our mprotect system call number is 125. Okay. Our mprotect prototype looks like this. Now. In Linux 32-bit to do a syscall, you set EAX as the syscall number and then the rest of your registers from EBX, CX, DX and so forth to contain your arguments. So for us to do this mprotect system call, we need to set EAX to 125, set EBX to address the address of the stack that we're changing the protection on, set ECX to len, set EDX to prop, to syscall. Now address has to be page aligned, length has to be modulo the page size, and prop is actually 7 which means it's readable, writable, and executable. Okay, so that's that's our starting point. So, there's some challenges to this. Um, the integer 125 is a 32-bit number, contains nulls, likewise for things like length, protection, and so forth. So that's something that we have to take into account. Let's add some extra code here and get ready for our blockchain. So let's load GDB. Uh, we're going to use the GDB Peter plugin. Set a breakpoint at start, run. Now, we need to set EAX to 125. One thing we can do is use a ROP gadget, pop EAX ret. We want that in libc. Actually, I'll just make sure ASLR is turned off. It would be problematic if it was on at this point. Breakpoint at start, run our plugin, all good to go. So let's search for our first ROP gadget, which is a POP EAX RET in libc. Great. Lots of options here. So POP EAX RET will struct Okay. So let's set EAX to mprotect. We're going to add this pop EAX rep. And now what we're going to add, we have to add a number, which is what EAX will be set to. But that number can't have any nulls in it. <coughs> so we're going to create A number that doesn't have any nulls in it. So this obviously isn't equal to one twenty five, though. 
So how do we turn that negative one, which is what EAX has at this point? We'll actually just add a comment there. X equals negative one. We can use another gadget now. How about we use increment EAX to manipulate that number. Let's do inc AX. There we go. Now it's equal to zero. And if we do this, 125 times we'll set EAX to 125 so EAX is set up now let's do <coughs> EBX set EBX to stack address we're going to use the same similar approach Let's use buffer plus equals pop ebx rep. We'll just make sure that we have that gadget available. <coughs> Great. Lots of things there. Pop ebx. Let's just make it a little bit neater. pop ebx rep. Now our address <coughs> has to be uh, page aligned. <coughs> so let's have a look at our stack. And this is just a placeholder, and we'll need to um, correct this once we start testing our program. Now the thing about this, we'll just add one to it, and that'll remove that null byte at the end. So if it's page aligned, it has to have a null byte at the end. So we'll add one to that, and then we can do a decrement of EBX. There we go. So let's just add that to our buffer plus equals address plus one. And then we want to do our deck EBX ret. So we're setting the address that we're going to mprotect, which is where our shell code is going to go. Okay. Then we need ECX to len. So let's do set ECX to len in pages. Um, modulo page size so buffer plus equals pop uh, ECX rep. let's just have a look for a pop ECX rep to make sure we've got that pop ECX let's also check for an increment of CCX Okay, let's just go back up to pop ECX. Pop ECX right. Yeah, looks good. Now, now we want an ink ECX right. So 
to get anyone. We just have to make sure that these don't have any bad characters in them. New lines, null rights, and so forth. So buffer plus equals buffer plus equals ink ECX ret buffer plus equals ink ECX ret times uh, let's do we can either do one or two pages so let's do two pages so it's calling that ink ECX enough time so that it the value is set to, to, to that. Now let's set edx to prot buffer plus equals pop edx. Let's just hope it has a pop edx here again. This is, we have quite a lot of gadgets available to us. Let's do pop edx for it. Do we have an ink EDX as well? Another gadget that we need. Great. Lots of gadgets. Ink EDX ret. Okay, that's good. So again, buffer plus equals buffer plus equals ink edx right getting it to zero and then getting it to seven okay so our registers are set up now our registers are set up for the system call let's look at the system call code in libc and we can see it here. There's a call which is going to call our system call code. Four pops, a comparison to see if the system call returned an error. If it returns an error, we're sort of in problems. But let's just call this directly. So that's our libc syscall. Good. So now, do syscall. We add libc syscall. Now, because of these pops, we have to add um, things on the stack to, to go into that, into those pops. So buffer plus equals. We need four words. Depends. Um, we can call them D words or words. I call I tend to call uh, regist uh, the, the natural integer size a word. Okay. So that's our system call. So now we've m protected our system call. Uh, we've m protected the stack so that it's executable. We need to correct that stack address. So we'll have to run the code a little bit. To figure that out. Now we want to do a jump to ESP. So let's do jump call ESP into libc. Okay. So this at this point uh, it gets the next thing off the um, it gets the next return address which is jumping to this gadget which will then jump to our which will then jump to our shell code. It's just getting a bit sparse there. Uh, those are all our gadgets that we need. Okay, now let's have our shell code as a trap to start off with. We'll replace this with our proper shell code later. Uh, we've got our jump, we need our jump to ESP jump ESP, buffer plus equals, and then our shell code. 
and that's effectively we should gain code execution at this at this point, providing we have stack address at the correct location. So I'm going to use Pwn tools to do some do some work. So from Pwn going to do list this buffer I'm going to do f equals gdb the bug prog name that's good comma aslr equals false going to pause and should be enough okay now if that it should it should work okay so let's just go back up here okay change mod I'm still in GDB. So change model plus. And let's have a look. Address plus one. Stack address plus one. Let's just change that to that. Always a, an error when you write code. Okay, let's set a breakpoint at. Let's start that again. Break. Start. Continue. And okay, here we go. So we do have we we reached our jump ESP. So that's great. That's great. So that's. You know, we're, 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 we've pretty much got this done. So let's look. Let's just load Peter. Print ESP. So that's our address on the stack. So our shell code is actually very close now. Um, and if we if we look at our um, if we look here, we yeah we do see our, our int three is right there. So let's just change this to C F F F, and we'll we'll use two pages. Use two pages. So there we go. Okay. Now let's run this again. And we should get a trap on our shell code. We got a seg fault. We got a seg fault. So what have we done here? F, 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 F. Let's change that to D. Address plus one. Let's have a look. F, F, F. Let's just check this EBX, pop EBX, decrement EBX. We've got our length, and we've got our protection, and we've got our syscall, and our jump ESP. 
address plus one looks good. Look at our jump ESP. Looks good. Our protection is good. Our pages good. if I saved it actually to be honest. Let's just set a breakpoint at our system call in the next one. Verify. And this is the normal sort of process of prop exploit. Break. Start. Continue. Break. Let's have a look at our our EBX is not set up correctly. So what have we done here? Our pop EBX. Where did we set our breakpoint here? One six. Let's just run that one more time. In our syscall, continue, break, six, let's, let's make sure that we're on our F7 E40 AB0, continue, and we've got that. Now let's look at our registers. That looks good. Now EAX does not seem correct here. Let's just do a ROP search. Pop AX ret libc F7 D72 A87, that's good. Let's do ink AX F7 F7 D72 A68. That's good. And our stack address looks okay. Check our gadgets. Think. ECX looks good. 
ADX looks good. There we are. So here we go. <sighs> <laughs> Oh uh, dear, this is <laughs> so the pop missing an equal sign. So the uh, little frustrating. Okay, let's try that again. Continue. And we got a seek trap. Excellent. Excellent. And that's. Uh, we've gained code execution. Now, let's let's replace um, let's replace the shell code with something a little bit better. Seth Benham, an obsolete of a hundred bytes. Uh, a Linux reverse TCP the bad characters. I'm going to use uh, port four four three. I'm going to write that to payload dot bin. Go back to our exploit. Now this time we're going to payload.bin. Okay. So we've read our shell code, we've written our shell code. Let's just move that back one page so we write to two pages, a sort of borderline across those two pages. And at this point, we should have our exploit ready to go. Let's Run our exploit, and we have code execution and a reverse CCP shell using ROP to protect the stack uh, and then execute our arbitrary shell code, which was the reverse TCP shell. So that's effectively our exploit. Uh, got trapped a little bit at one point uh, by a missing equal sign in my shellcode, but also gives a good example of how to debug uh, these particular kinds of uh, problems. So thank you very much. Please go to my Patreon page uh, uh, and pledge, uh, or just go to my YouTube channel and check out some of the other videos. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.